I've been traveling all over the state. We've held 10 out of 12 forums. We've been, we did one in Suffolk, we did one in Nassau. And just to let you know, we did the forums a little differently. Basically what our forums were, were a conversation. And we were interested in listening to teachers and listening to parents. And what we wanted to know was how is this affecting your child? How is it affecting your home? How is it affecting your classroom? And how is it affecting your school? And I mean, if you have to sum up, and no matter where we went, we did one in Suffolk, we did one in Nassau, we did one in um, Staten Island, we did one in Wappingers Falls, we did one in Rochester, we did another one in Syracuse, we did another one in Buffalo. Last week we were in the North Country, then we went to uh, Watertown. We were, I'm losing track, we were in Corning. Right. We're going to Troy next week. And then we have another one as west as you can go in New York. And if I can sum up what I've heard from parents, educators, administrators, if I could really sum it up, what it would be is help us. You're hurting our kids. Stop it, all right? And nobody's listening to us. What I can say to you now is we started this, I've been living this with a lot of people up on this day for the last six months. And in the beginning, it was a battle uphill. But you know what? You're on the cusp here. You're on the cusp of, of really getting rid of this. They're starting to listen. They have to listen. Right, but understand that the governor's state of the state address is coming up. And that's the target right there. And the target is to go after the governor. The governor sits there and tells you that I have nothing to do with education. If anybody in this room believes that, please come up to me after this. I have a bridge to sell you in Brooklyn. <laughs> Cheap, slightly used, okay? So, and for your information, when, when he started saying that, I have Doug in my office, and Doug's very good on the computer. I usually tell him what I want to get done, and Doug can come up with it. So we put Cuomo's face on Waldo. And instead of where's Waldo, it's where's Cuomo. And on here, we have his address, so you can write him a letter. We have his phone number, so you can call him. We have his fax number, we have his email. We have his Twitter, we have his Facebook. So trust, reach out and touch the governor for Christmas, okay? And I don't know if you remember, but he also said that he was going to be the lobbyist for children, okay? How'd that work out, you know? So, for your information, in the back, you'll see the thing with all the information to call the governor. Then what you'll see is a copy of the bill. We have a bill here, actually, to withdraw from Common Core and race to the top. After that, and after a lot of conversation, and listening pe to people throughout the state, I drafted it. I had another bill drafted. I just got it back today. And what it does is right now, the regents are actually appointed by one branch of government, by the assembly majority. There are 13 regents, and there are four regents at large. So I put, I got tired of, of listening about where did these people come from. Understand that the regents, out of 17 regents, the answer that I've got is I think three or four actually taught in the classroom out of 17. I don't think it's too much to ask that people have a background in education. I don't think it's too much to ask that the chairperson for the education committee in the assembly have a degree or have experience in education. Our present chairwoman has a degree in political science. I don't think it's too much to ask that people that are working for the committee, that are helping write policies for the schools, have some background 
in education. Anybody here think this is too much to ask? Oh. So these are some of the things that you have to express. The other thing that I'll tell you too is, in each one, how many teachers do we have? Okay, you know what, and I guarantee you there's a couple more teachers in the room. When did it become embarrassing to say I'm a teacher? Okay, when did it get to that point? When did Cuomo get elected? 2011. Um, look, the bottom line is, the other thing too that I see out here is fear. And, and I give a lot of credit to some teachers because when I, we've been out here doing these forums, we've had teachers come up, sit down, and the first thing they said to, the, uh, to us was, I'm putting my job in jeopardy, okay? And I'm afraid to speak, but I'm not gonna sit here anymore because this is abusive to the kids that, that I'm charged with. And when I say my kids, it's not only my kids at home, it's my kids in the classroom. And you know what, I'm an ex-Brooklyn cop. I worked in East New York. I've seen people shot. I've seen people in horrific accidents and everything else. Some of the stories that I heard from teachers and parents, poster brought tears to my eyes. And one I'll give you is a special ed teacher had nine kids taking the test. And this is on YouTube. She know what happens is with the special ed, there's a there's an amount of, do we have any special ed teachers in? All right, this trust that you have to form with your students and you guide them. Well, with these tests, their IEPs went out the window mm -hmm. and they weren't allowed to help these. And the kids would look at them just with their eyes, almost in tears, asking them you know, to help, and they had to say, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to. And this one teacher, she sat there, and there's this little boy, and understand, 90 minutes of tests for three days they had these kids going through. And there was a little boy, and she noticed that he wasn't writing on the paper. And she walked over to him. He was stabbing himself with a pencil. Okay? She took the pencil away, and she said, that's when I felt like a teacher again, and not just an administrator of a test. So, you know, I'm looking at this. I've looked at the curriculum. I've listened to people. I don't think that the curriculum is age appropriate. I don't think it's developmentally appropriate. My degree is for elementary education and, and classroom. So I went to SUNY Plattsburgh for education. I was taught that the purpose of a test was not to test the children, it was to test me. And to see if I was getting that information through to the child. And what happened if too many of the kids failed my test, it meant that I didn't do my job in teaching them this information, so I had to go back and reteach it. All right? When you have 70% of these kids failing, it's not the kids, it's the test. The other thing you have, there is no rubric here for kids with disabilities, okay? So what they're doing is they say every kid should be here. And if you have a special education student who has a, def uh, a developmental disability, they're going to be, the best they're gonna be is here. They're never gonna be here, okay? And what you're gonna do is the way that they're presenting this, it's like a script. You're going to leave those children behind. Okay, so basically, from day one, it's you sit in the corner and we're gonna water you once in a while, all right? The same thing with advanced learners. So an advanced learner, they want everybody here, if an advanced learner is here, they're gonna bring them back down to the average. This is not what education's about. This is not what we're supposed to be doing. Now, here's a question I ask everybody. Because I looked at the curriculum. If you go into Engage New York and you look at the ELAs, can anyone here please tell me why a first grader has to be able to point out ancient Mesopotamia on a map yeah. or a globe and explain the contributions that ancient Mesopotamia has made on modern day civilization? 
There's six. Okay? There's six. Really? And if you look, and has anybody here dealt with the math problems? <laughs> Parents, how many hours of homework do we get in a night? I get two, four. Has any has anybody looked at the math problems? Has anybody does anybody understand the math problems? We have an assemblyman who teaches college level math. He looked at it and said, I don't even know what the hell they're talking about. Okay? Uh, have you seen some of the books that they're giving for fifth grade? About a little girl whose parents were killed in Iraq. Right? That would be third grade. Third grade? Sorry. We have people that are serving overseas. Okay? We have, they have the Taliban there with guns, right? Her trying to sneak away to school. Anybody think this is appropriate? Anybody think? Um, there's another book. What is it? Long Walk to the River? Long Walk to Water. To Water? Sorry. It's about what, a quarter of an inch thick? Yeah. And it's five months that you have to spend on that book? Still reading it. Right. <laughs> because of the curriculum. Because every quarter inch of the writing, he has to make the notes on every single thing writing. Right. And you know what? I'm meeting teachers out there whose school districts are telling them, you have to do it exactly how they're telling you to do it. And if you look at some of the modules, they don't even edit it. It'll say, pick out the numbers, and there are no numbers. It's grammatically incorrect, right? There's errors all over. I have teachers that are handing out things in the class, and they go, okay, let's talk about this. And they go, this makes no sense. And she looks at it, she goes, you're right, forget that one, let's try this one. We're paying for this, okay? And I, I heard today that what we want to do, one of the recommendations, was we're missing modules. Let's get, let's get all the modules in. Well, the ones we have are garbage. Why do we want more? Look, all I'm saying, we need to stop. We need to put the brakes on here. You know, if you look at, if it's supposed to be a guideline, let it be a guideline. But you know what? Let's bring the teachers in. Let's bring the special education people. Let's bring the mental health professionals. Let's bring the people that are actually, should be, that are on the front line to actually write a curriculum that's age appropriate, developmentally appropriate, and it's not going to cause this much stress and aggravation in the households and on, and on our children. What I can tell you is, look, I, when I taught, I remember teaching and I had a kid that didn't know how to do the nines times table, okay? And I taught him to do it on his fingers. And it was like I gave him the key to the city. And if anybody's ever taught a child, you can be a parent and teach a child. And if you're trying to teach them a concept, all of a sudden you can see it in their eye when it clicks. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. All right. I remember the funniest thing was when I did my student teaching, you know, after being on the police department, I went to school later. And when I did my student teaching, they put me in kindergarten. <laughs> and I looked at him. I said, do I look like Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> but the one thing about kindergarten, okay, every five minutes that light went on because everything was new, okay? We were concentrating on having them write from left to right, having them form letters, having them have social interplay with other children learning social skills, okay? Kindergarten was a place where you wanted these kids to start enjoying school, to look forward to going to school, okay? This is wiping that out. So look, I've been fighting this battle for a long time. As a matter of fact, I had one of my colleagues ask me, uh, who started my car in Albany in the morning? And I looked at him, I said, why are you looking for a job? And he said, no. But what I need from you, and the help that I need from you, get online, sign the petition, reach out, touch the governor, okay? And trust me, just keep bombarding him. Do whatever you can. Don't just do one, 
write them a letter, send them an email, send them a fax. If you got a carrier pigeon, I'll take it. You know, whatever you can do, keep the pressure on him. I believe January 8th is the state of the state address. And all I can say to you is little Mario is up for election this year too. So let him know, right? But the bottom line is this has got to come to an end. The breaks have got to go on. We have to put educators in the room. And you know what? I think we need parents in the room too. Yeah. But we need all the stakeholders to be involved because they left all of these people out. All right, so look, I wanna thank everybody for coming here because if this wasn't a concern of yours, you wouldn't be here. You know, what I can say, if you're interested in looking at the forums, they're all on the internet, go take a look. But I think what has to happen now, and by the way, we have to introduce, we have legislator Tom Selmy here with us tonight. And we have Claudia Cantone, who's here for Senator Boyd. And she's here gathering information to tell Phil, trust me, I'll talk to Phil. You know, uh, but like I said, pick up, the piece, pick up the papers in the back, make the phone calls, right? And, you know, go, to, go on your Facebook. How many people are on Facebook here? How many people signed my petition? How many people are going to sign the petition tomorrow? Good. Do me a favor. Share this with all your contacts. Share it with all your emails. Right? Put it out there as much as you can. Right now, I check. It's 20,556 signatures. These are letters that go to the government. What I can tell you is they got upset. Okay when I did plug Long Island in for the electricity and they got, I think it was 600 emails. They were kind of upset with that saying, you're blowing up my email, okay? And I said, tomorrow I'll go out and tell more people to sign. But now he's got over 20,000 going up to 21,000. <laughs> so lastly, I'll leave you with this. You know what? We get out here, we talk, I guess we're the faces of this. Right, we're the ones out front. But this is not our movement. This is a mommy-led movement. This is a parent-led movement. And one thing people are starting to learn is something that I learned a long time ago in my household. If mommy's not happy, nobody's happy. <laughs> if daddy's not happy, who cares? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Graff. Yeah. 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 What it's going to do, okay. understand that when we put this bill in, right, uh, in June, the whole purpose of this is nobody was talking about this. Nobody wanted to deal with it. They just wanted it to go away. They figured it would get implemented, after a while, people would get used to it, right? And nobody would say a word. So the idea behind this bill was to start a conversation. We started one hell of a conversation throughout the whole state. Yep. Yeah. All right? Now what can happen here is, and I tell people all the time, Albany is one of the most partisan places you've ever seen in your life, okay? And this is what, this is what you'll see. In order to get a bill passed, and everybody understands it's got to pass the Senate, it's got to pass the Assembly, and it's got to be signed by the governor. So what happens is the majority in the Senate are the Republicans. So you have to have a Republican sponsor in the Senate. And you have to have a majority sponsor in the Assembly. Okay? Now, Right now, I have this bill. I'm in the minority. But that puts me in a position like Monty Hall. Let's make a deal. So if I can get a Republican to sponsor it in the Senate, I will gladly hand it over to a Democrat in the Assembly and let him put his name on it and submit the bill. 
This should not be about politics, okay? This shouldn't be a Republican issue. It shouldn't be a Democratic issue. This is an issue about our children, okay? And there's an old saying by Harry Truman, it's amazing what you can get done if you don't care who gets the credit. Thank you so much, Mr. Graff.